Hi everyone, my name is Kate Topham and I am the Digital Humanities Archivist at Michigan State University. In this video, I'm going to walk you through Mix and Match, which is a Wikidata tool we'll be using as part of the 2020 Graphic Possibilities Wikidata Hackathon. This video is aimed towards people who have a basic understanding of Wikidata items, statements, and references, but not with Mix and Match itself. Mix and Match was created by user Magnus Manska to make the process of adding information to Wikidata easier. Mix and Match takes a data set like a library catalog, taxonomy, or database, and attempts to match every entry contained in that data set to items in Wikidata, Wikipedia, and other Wikimedia projects. You can access Mix and Match for yourself at the URL at the bottom of my slide here. Mix and Match contains over 2,500 catalogs from dozens of different topics and interest areas, from podcasts to philately, from basketball to biology. The goal is to identify and create items that are missing from Wikidata. The more information available on Wikidata, the more useful it is for all of us. So, how does it work? Here you can see one of the catalogs we'll be using at the workshop, a data set of publishers from the MSU Libraries Comics Collection. Mix and Match has divided up the catalog entries into four categories, fully matched, preliminarily matched, not applicable to Wikidata, and unmatched. A fifth category, no Wikidata, is no longer used. Fully matched means that a user has matched this catalog entry to a Wikidata item. Preliminarily matched means that the system, Mix and Match, has found one or more possible matches for that entry in Wikidata. Not applicable to Wikidata means that this catalog entry is not relevant to or does not belong in Wikidata. And unmatched means that this entry has not yet been matched to anything on Wikidata. When a catalog or similar data list is uploaded, Mix and Match automatically searches Wikidata looking for a match for each catalog entry. If it finds a match, it links that entry to the Wikidata item and adds that to the preliminarily matched list. However, these matches are not permanent and must be confirmed by a human user. Anything that it cannot match is marked as unmatched and awaits a human to decide how to sort it. Once Mix and Match has conducted the automatic matching, a user needs to complete that process. This diagram shows the decision tree you'll follow within Mix and Match. You can work with either of the auto-generated lists, preliminarily matched or unmatched. The goal is to get as many entries into fully matched as possible. When you work with the preliminary matches, you just need to investigate whether Mix and Match made the right decision. If, after investigation, you determine that the choice was correct, you select Confirm to mark it as fully matched. If Mix and Match was wrong, select Remove, which sends that entry to the unmatched list for another user to consider. Working with the unmatched list is a little bit more complex. Mix and Match might still give you potential matches, but you'll have to do some searching on your own. You now have the option to create new items for entries that you can't match. Here's a simplified version of that decision tree. There are two basic questions you'll need to ask as you go through mix and match. First, does the catalog entry match an item on Wikidata? And then, should this entry be included as a Wikidata item at all? Based on the answers to these questions, we have three options. Set queue, not applicable, and new item. I'll address each of these in turn. To answer the first question, we need to look for matches in Wikidata, either through items that Mix and Match has suggested or by searching on your own. If you find a match, choose set queue, which is short for set queue ID. A queue ID is a unique identifier that is given to every item on Wikidata. You can find the queue ID of an item in the URL of that item's web page or in parentheses next to that item's primary label at the top of the page. When you choose set queue, you will enter the queue ID of the matching Wikidata item. Now those records are fully matched and you can move on to the next entry. If you can't find a matching Wikidata item, then you have two options, create a new item or select not applicable. To make the right choice, you'll need to decide if this entry is appropriate for a Wikidata item. For the purposes of this workshop, you will almost always answer yes, but it's important to be aware of this option. 
Wikidata has notability guidelines to determine what can be included as an item. An item is notable if it meets one of these criteria. First, anything that has a page on Wikipedia, Wikisource, or other Wikimedia project qualifies, with an important caveat. The other wiki page must not be a talk page, file, or other kind of special page. There are a few other caveats, but I won't get into them here. Secondly, it must refer to an instance of a clearly identifiable conceptual or material entity and can be described using serious sources. That means you shouldn't make a Wikidata item for your childhood imaginary friend or for every blade of grass in your backyard. Verifiable, useful information must be available about that entity. This is the rule that allows us to create most of the new items for our hackathon. All of the publishers and authors in the MSU library catalog are clearly identifiable and are described through available references because they are listed in the catalog. Finally, an entity is notable if it fulfills a structural need. That is, if having this item on Wikidata would enable us to add more information to other items. This rule also applies to our catalog because we can link authors and publishers to other items in Wikidata in useful ways. So, if the item you're matching does not meet one of the notability requirements, the answer to is it appropriate for Wikidata is no, and you select not applicable. Selecting not applicable indicates that the entry should never ever have a Wikidata item. Again, for the purposes of this workshop, you most likely will not ever choose this option, but I wanted to bring it up anyway. However, if it does meet the notability requirements, that means you can go ahead and create a new item. This will place that new item into the fully matched category. From here, you can go to your new item and start adding statements and references, or continue using mix and match to match more entries. But there's always a fourth option. If you are unsure what judgment to make, you can always skip the item and leave it for someone else. So how do you use mix and match? There are two primary methods of conducting the matching process. I'll explain what each, what each one is like and then do a demonstration of both of them. The first is called match mode. It presents only unmatched catalog entries and randomizes the order. It shows the full description of the entry and lists Wikidata search results in the same window. The second, referred to as list mode, splits up the catalog by category, one list for preliminary matches, one for unmatched, and so on. The user can peruse these entries in order and match items as they scroll. This mode is great for visualizing the progress you make as you make matches. All right, so now I will do a demonstration of match mode. So to start off with mix and match, you need to go to mix-n-match.toolforge.org uh, forward slash pound sign forward slash. You really do need the pound sign in there. I have tested it out. You'll come to this home page. Make sure you're logged in. Uh, otherwise, you won't be able to make any matches. Both of the MSU Libraries data sets that we'll be working with are in the catalog group literature. So we want to scroll down, find literature down here. Then you'll find, M you'll find MSU Comics authors up here. The publisher's data set is down here, but for this demo, I'm going to use the author's data set. So you want to click this little arrow next to the data set you want and select match mode. So that will bring you to a page that looks like this. We have the author's name up here. Uh, this is what it says in the bibliographic record. Burns, Jean, 1889 to 1974. That's when he was born and died. Uh, then we have the entry ID for this entry in Mix and Match, and then the catalog ID for the, uh, the record in MSU Libraries. If we want to see a little bit more about this particular comic that this author published, we can click on this ID number and it will bring you to the MSU library record page. Then we have a little description about the, uh, about the book, then their type. This author is a human, presumably. Uh, here are the buttons that allow us to choose whether to set the QID, make a new item, or mark it as not applicable. And then scrolling down is our search results. 
So we don't have any search results from Wikidata, but we do have some results from Wikipedia. So the first entry in our search results here says Gene Burns, good sign, that's the guy we're looking for. And it lists a little bit of uh, information from the Wikipedia article, like his birth and death date, which match above, and it mentions that he created a comment strip. So I'm going to look up just to see if this was titled for How to Draw Comics. That doesn't match the series name, uh, but I'm going to click on his name to go to his Wikipedia page. So we can learn a little bit more about him. Sometimes the uh, the article will list their bibliography. It doesn't here, but because his birth and death dates match and he's identified as a comics author, I'm going to assume that this is him. So going back to the mix and match page, I see that a Wikidata uh, item has been created, but it didn't appear in our Wikidata. So I'll click on the QID to go to his page. Sure enough, it just has the links for uh, Wikipedia and some simple statements here. So I'm going to go back to mix and match and I'm going to say that this is him. So I'm going to copy this QID here and enter it in this box here. It's kind of hard to see, but it, it's right to the left of the set Q button. I'll paste it in there and click set Q. Now we move on to the next one. So next we have uh, Mr. James A. Braden. Scrolling down, still no results from Wikidata. Uh, nothing in Wikipedia is standing out to me. So I'm going to actually click search end at Wikipedia and see what comes up. And still we don't see anything, so I'm going to type in James A. Braden and see if that changes it. And it doesn't. So I'm going to go back to mix and match and search Wikidata directly, try the same thing. James A. Braden doesn't show up. James A. Braden. He shows up on this list, but I don't see anything for him particularly. So I'm going to go ahead and create a new item for James Braden. So I just click new item and it's done. And it will open up a new tab or maybe a new window, depending on your system, and show you the new item you just created. Now, we could go in and edit some of this information because it's a little bit clunky. Some of it's not quite correct. Like, we, he, James is not published at this date. We don't want to give him subject headings. So we would want to go and turn those things into statements. I'm not going to do that right now, but someone will go back and help me out later. So now I'm going to switch gears and talk about list mode. So to go back to the collection homepage, I'm going to click MSU Comics Authors up here and choose one of these. You can uh, peruse the fully matched list just to check on what other people are doing, but I'm going to go into the preliminarily matched list first. So here we have all of the preliminary matches that Mix and Match found for us. We can scroll through and look through all of them and see if one catches our eye, but I'm just going to start with Dan Barry up here. We have the 1923-1997, the birth and death dates, and if we click on his name, it will take us to the bibliographic record for the comic that he wrote. And uh, because and it has matched with uh, Dan Barry, and it includes the birth and death dates, which match what our record has. So I'm going to say that this is a correct match and click confirm. And there it shows your it, uh, it shows your author information, and you can move on to the next one. So now we can move on to another person. I'm going to look at Brandon Walsh. Uh, because his uh, Wikidata entry doesn't say much, it just says person. So I'm going to go there, and it looks like we just have his ORCID ID. So I don't know if this Brandon Walsh is the comics artist, Brandon Walsh. So I'm going to go back to that and say remove, so that someone else can do a little bit of, a little bit more digging to see if uh, those 
two entries match. So now I'm going to show you how to do list mode with the unmatched list. So I'm going to go back to the catalog page and click unmatched. So this is the unmatched list in list mode. Uh, you'll see we don't have suggested matches for most of these, uh, but I'm going to start with uh, Walter Foster. So first I'm going to check uh, Wikidata, click search Wikidata, opens a new thing, and we don't have any results. That's okay. I'm going to delete the birth and death dates and uh, where it says Walter Thomas because sometimes it it just needs to be cleaned up in order for the search to catch what we really want. So unsurprisingly we have a lot of Walter Fosters but we have a Walter T. Foster who's an American artist. I'm gonna click him. 1891 is the date of birth which matches what we have in our bibliographic record. He also has a Wikipedia entry, so I'm going to click that. And him being an artist, it looks like this is correct. So I am going to go back to Wikidata, copy his QID, click set Q right here, enter it, press OK. And there, he is matched. So next, I'm going to look at Mary Bowen Stevenson, our next person. I'll search Wikidata for her. Nothing shows up. I'm going to delete this, uh, this little statement. This is telling Wikidata that we're looking for a person. And we don't have anything for that. So I'm going to go back, search Wikipedia and we don't find anything, nothing close. So I am going to create a new item for her. I'm gonna click new item. And there it's done. So I can now look at Mary Bowen Stevenson person. And all of the catalog information has been added. Uh, we can either start unpacking this information into statements or go back to mix and match and move on. So I hope that little quick demonstration was helpful. Uh, now I'm going to give you some tips for making matches because sometimes it can be a little bit confusing. So number one, do your research. Check Wikidata, check Wikipedia, uh, there's, you can also use Google to your advantage. I found Google to be very helpful. There's a lot of information on the internet. Obviously, make sure you verify any sources that you use. Number two, don't guess. We want good information. And if you make a mistake, someone else will have to split up the items that you've matched. And that's kind of an annoying process. Three, don't be afraid to make new items. The point is to add new things to Wikidata to make it more complete. If you make a duplicate by mistake, it can always be merged. And merging two items is much easier than splitting one item up into two. So usually you should err on the side of creating more new items. Four, uh, don't match to disambiguation items. Some of the people and publishing companies we'll be looking for might be listed on disambiguation pages on Wikipedia. So always double check that you aren't matching to a disambiguation page. So happy matching. This brings me to the end of my video. Thank you so much for watching. Again, my name is Kate Topham. Uh, you can find me on Wikipedia and Wikidata as Toff Kate, and you can find me on Twitter at Topcat.